and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. Our call to worship. Teach us your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Give us undivided hearts to revere your name. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, and we will glorify your name forever. For your love is great towards us. You are merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Let us worship, let us praise, let us give thanks. Our opening prayer is an affirmation. I believe in truth as a living reality, not captured in theory or creed, but revealed to those who love the truth of Jesus, the spirit of truth, the truth of God. Because I believe, I trust, not blindly, but open-eyed and bold as a child climbing into a mother's lap, the truth of Jesus, the spirit of truth, the truth of God. Because I believe, I serve, not as a slave that serves a tyrant, but like farmers reaping a harvest, the truth of Jesus, the spirit of truth, the truth of God. Ask anyone today, what is truth? And you're going to start an interesting conversation. Try it on a university campus and you're likely to receive laughter, scorn, and derision. The concept of truth has clearly fallen on hard times and the consequences of rejecting it are ravaging human society. One of the most profound and eternally significant questions in the Bible was posed by an unbeliever. Pilate, the man who handed Jesus over to be crucified. He turned to Jesus in his final hour and asked, What is truth? What is truth? Pilate stared at the tired Galilean Jew in front of him. Jesus was silent. Pilate's eyes widened. What is truth? He repeated more firmly. Jesus didn't blink or speak. There were no words to reply. Jesus was answering the question simply by being. The sheer fact of his existence, his embodiment of all that is holy, answered the question. The truth is never in words. It was always, is always the word. The truth is a person, a person named Jesus, the person we understand to be the Christ. He is the way, the life, and the truth. There is no other truth. This truth, this person, promised we would encounter him in others, in the hungry, in the sick, in the lonely, in the imprisoned, in the thirsty, in the outcasts. The truth is in them. In John chapter 18, verses 37 to 38, is the portion of the dialogue between Jesus and Pontius Pilate prior to the crucifixion. Pilate asks Jesus, so you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? What is truth? Every person that has ever lived has had to deal with this question because every human behavior is ultimately guided by that person's belief and truth. We tell our children to eat their vegetables. Why? Because we believe they're good for our health. When you tell them, stay away from that. Why? Because we believe that something like fire or power tools, etc. will bring harm to them. We buy a particular product instead of another one because, for various reasons, we think it will be better for us. From the simple to the complex, from the mundane and inconsequential to the extraordinary and life-changing, our decisions are ultimately grounded in our perceptions of what is true. We live according to our system of belief. What is truth? Our perception of it is the foundation for every action, but are our perceptions correct? Is what we are believing really true? Is it in accordance to reality, or are we believing lies? Sometimes it's not easy and even impossible to figure out what is true. 
Sometimes it's because of contradictory information, and at other times it's because of a lack of information. So what is truth? It's a question vital to our existence, for to believe incorrectly can result in tragedy. The common illustration of this is taking medication. You must be sure that you are taking the correct drug in the correct amount, or serious injury or death could result. Truth is vital to our existence, and if it is vital to our physical well-being, then it is even more vital to our spiritual existence and well-being. What is truth? The Bible is truth. Through the centuries, the Christian faith has been mocked, criticized, and the Bible relegated to the ash heap of civilization. For centuries, the Bible has been banned, blacklisted, burned, banished, blasphemed, berated, and blasted by a pathetic parade of political tyrants, atheistic dictators, humanistic philosophers, cultural icons, and self-congratulating academics. But what if the Bible was not just a human book of clever stories concocted by Jesus' followers? What if the critics are wrong? On what basis does the Bible claim to be the Word of God? Peter gives us some powerful insights to quiet the critics and assure the saints. In 2 Peter chapter 1, For we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. Both men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. This passage tells us our faith is not based on myths and unsubstantiated facts. Our faith is based on the testimony of personal and reliable eyewitnesses. Our faith is based on the factual sound foundation of fulfilled prophecy. The passage tells us the Bible is reliable and verifiable because the Bible is not the product of man's unfounded opinions about God. The Bible is not the product of man's impulsive and unreliable will. The Bible is the inspired, inerrant, and authoritative result of the Holy Spirit working through men. So how important is it to have an accurate and truthful document as the foundation of our faith? If the book that tells us what to believe is false, then the faith in that book is pointless. So how do we know that the book God has given us is true and right and accurate? Can we be sure? Can we have confident assurance that what God has said is true and that his promises will come to pass? Peter's letter is all about that certainty. He wants us to truly know God through Jesus Christ. He wants us to be certain about our standing before God, and He wants us to be making every effort to make our calling and election sure. And He wants us to be sure of the Word of God upon which our salvation is based. And Peter brings all of this together to call us to be all the more sure about this Word from God. We can be certain that the apostolic Word, the New Testament, and the prophetic word, the Old Testament, are from God. They are sourced in God. They are given to us by God from His will through men who spoke from God. Therefore, we can know that what it says about future days is certainly true. The kingdom majesty and power and glory that broke through on the Mount of Transfiguration is but a foretaste of the glory and power and majesty to be fully revealed when Jesus returns. 
we must see and know and rejoice in the settled word of God, which makes known to us the settled work of Christ. See him in all his glory as presented on these always true and always right pages of scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our attitude toward the truth, toward Jesus, determines the outcome of our lives. If we don't love the truth, if we resist it, we resist salvation. But if we do love the truth, then we embrace salvation and we receive the reward, eternal life. There is no greater blessing than to walk in the truth. It is possible for everyone to walk in the truth so that it can set us free from sin, both the consequences of it and its power over us. God loves all of us and is rich enough for everyone who calls on him. And what will the result of loving the truth be? that we are transformed from who we are by nature, and the life of Jesus will be manifested in us. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The truth gives hope. There is no reason to ever be discouraged when we see the truth about ourselves, no matter what we see. Instead, we can be filled with hope because we know that the spirit of truth is also the spirit of power and through him we are able to overcome all things that stand between us and our goal of being like Christ. And whoever has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. We need to love and acknowledge the truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, I will walk in your truth. We can only be saved and sanctified in the same degree that we love the truth. So let's welcome it with open hearts, even when it hurts to see and acknowledge what we are really like by nature. Without first seeing it, we cannot be purified by it. As the great hymn, God has spoken by his prophet says, God is speaking by his spirit, speaking to the hearts of people in the age-long word, declaring God's own message now as then. Through the rise and fall of nations, one sure faith is standing fast. God abides, his word unchanging. God the first and God the last. Let us, God's people, pray. Holy God, always ancient, always new, in the midst of all the chaos and uncertainty in our earthly existence, calm us with the warmth of Christ's love. Shelter us in his kingdom of glory and faith. Jesus, God's word made human, Help us hear your voice and live in your truth. Holy God, always ancient, always new, on behalf of all who are governed by legitimate means or by force of violence on our planet, in our country, and in our community, we implore you to infuse wisdom, sanity, and humanity in those who lead. Jesus, God's word made human, help us hear your voice and live in your truth. Almighty Creator, Transfuse us through the glory of Christ to, mark, to move our minds and hearts beyond faithful attendance into prayerful witness and righteous action. We ask through Jesus our Christ, the King and faithful witness, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter and Counselor, who live and reign with you as one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace.